Let's talk power armor traitors from the Eye of Terror, and a guide as to which Chaos Legion you might want to pick in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspecs Tactics, where today we're talking Chaos. And with the new Chaos Space Ring Codex out and about, I thought it was high time to update the guide to picking Chaos Legions in 40k on tabletop. We'll talk through each Legion's lore, roughly how an army of them might play on the battlefields of the 41st millennium, and roughly how strong they are in game right now. We'll talk through each major Chaos Legion, including the Thousand Sons and Death Guard, and then go over a few notable Renegade Warbands as well. Loads to talk about, so let's jump straight in. So first up, we have the descendants of Horus, the Black Legion, arguably first amongst traitors, the practical Black Crusaders that actually bully the other legions into line somewhat, and force them to cooperate a bit on taking down the hated Imperium. The Legion is the 16th Legion, and was formerly the Lunar Wolves, then the Sons of Horus, taking the Black only after the Emperor obliterated Horus' body and soul. When they make war, it's often in the form of Great Black Crusades, issuing out of the Eye of Terror, the pinnacle of which culminated in the fall of Cadia and the opening of the Great Rift across the Imperium. Rather than being dedicated to any one Chaos deity, they embrace all aspects of the Chaos Pantheon within their ranks, and there's multiple warbands dedicated to followers of the Black Legion, who are particularly dedicated to Khorne or Slaanesh, for example. In battle, their Terminator formations and standard legionaries are perhaps particularly notable units, fighting with a determined and practical philosophy than few of the other legions can match. In terms of miniatures for 40k, I feel like quite a lot of the Chaos Space Marine range does reflect Black Legion quite well. They are pretty much your standard issue Chaos Marines. They do have a couple of the characters, including a unique sculpt for Abaddon the Despoiler and Harkin World Claimer. Abaddon being the architect of the Black Crusades, and perhaps one of the primary antagonists of 40k in general. And Harkin being one of his most trusted lieutenants, planting a spear in the world that Abaddon has told him to claim, and the world will fall within a hundred days. In game, they tend to be fairly balanced between range and melee, their legion trait gives them an extra buff to hit enemies that are close, and that's usually going to be something that helps out much of the army. If you're taking Black Legion, it pretty much makes sense to take Abaddon the Despoiler along, he's incredibly powerful just off his own merit, but he also makes some Black Legion units go up to absolutely being on steroids, getting four rerolls to hits and wounds. For notable units, true to their fluff, they really like the Terminators and Legionaries. They can make Terminators extra nasty by teleporting them across the board or giving them obsec, and they've got a nice stratagem for them in Bringers of Despair. Legionaries can also do some objective shenanigans, turning off enemy objective secured, and basically auto getting you points if an objective is contested. In tournaments and high level of play, they are one of the most played Chaos factions, and rank them as fairly medium to strong overall. Abaddon is great, and he makes the Black Legion even better. Overall, if you want to take up Horus's legacy and make war with a great force of Chaos Undividers, then the Black Legion might be for you. Next up, we have the Third Legion, the Emperor's Children, the Legion that was so dedicated to martial prowess and excellence that they became an easy target for the prideful machinations of Slaanesh, and ever strive to reach excesses of excellence to the extent where they augment their own senses, take disturbing concoctions of performance-enhancing drugs, and make war with brutal sonic weaponry that obliterates the enemy's nervous systems. Their combatants are renowned as great duelists, being able to take down enemy champions with ease, though currently their Primarch Fulgrim is missing in action, believed to be lounging on some pleasure planet somewhere, though I'm sure he will make his return into the galaxy at large at a later date. For unique miniatures, the Emperor's Children have a couple of absolutely ancient sculpts in Lucius the Eternal, one of their champions, and the very old resin upgrade kits for Noise Marines, where you can get some sonic weapons. They really are pretty old and dated at this point, and don't hold up well. It seems inevitable at some stage they're going to get a full Legion makeover, much the way that Thousand Sons and Death Guard have, but I wouldn't wager on it being particularly soon, as we know that World Eaters are next. There is a fair amount of fairly nice stuff for them for 30k the Horus Heresy as well, which would fit the bill for 40k, particularly things like their cacophony to represent sonic weapons. In game, as patronised by Slaanesh, every single unit gets the keyword of Slaanesh, which can be quite helpful for certain stratagems and things. They get some passive combat buffs, including ignoring modifiers to hits and getting extra AP, and then a whole ton of their options revolve around them being better than the enemy in combat, all sorts of ways to amp up their damage, make them fight last, or ways to get them into combat a bit more unscathed with a long charge. They also get Noise Marines as troops, quite a big deal, as generally Chaos Space Marines don't really have any decent ranged damage dealers in the troop slot, and they do seem like a very reasonable choice with Sonic Weaponry. Again, the Emperor's Children are one of the more common legions to be played competitively, they are pretty strong in game at the moment. A lot of Chaos stuff is pretty melee orientated, and being able to get there a bit easier with marks allowing you to advance and charge and their stratagem are both really powerful things. 
In any case, if you want to collect a legion dedicated to excess and excellence on all its forms, and look down on your peers out of augmented sensory eyes, then the Emperor's children might be for you. From Slanesh to Korn, and here we have the World Eaters, the 12th Legion, Blood Craze Berserkers under Angron, their natural aggression fueled up to unnatural levels by the Butcher's Nails, giving them augmented strength and unnatural prowess with melee combat. Certainly a very natural choice for a Legion to fall to Korn during the Horus Heresy, particularly with the Emperor seeming to do his best to make Angron absolutely hate him, always likely to be a dog to turn against his master at the first opportunity. In battle, they care for very little besides hurling themselves forward to melee combat. Their corn berserkers are rightly feared as some of the scariest shock troopers in the entire 40k universe. Their enemies hacked apart by obscenely powerful chain axe blows. Currently in 40k, world eaters are in a bit of a limbo state. They're going to be one of the next codexes and have an entire range of chaos marines dedicated to them. Games Workshop have already shown off Angron's model himself and the new Corn Berserkers, but they'll likely be getting a whole load of other interesting stuff, including unique cultists, terminators, plenty of characters and more. Currently in game though, they've got some tied over rules for a white dwarf to supplement Codex Chaos Space Marines, but still can pack a punch on the tabletop. Corn Berserkers count as troops and get plus one attack in the Legion, making them a pretty excellent choice, and Red Butcher's Terminators get to fight twice, making them ludicrously dangerous. The Legion definitely has some drawbacks though, Korn hates Psychers, so he can't take any of them, and some of the Psychic powers in Codex Chaos Marines are very good. And currently, overall, I think it does leave World Eaters as perhaps one of the weakest Chaos Legions at the moment, though obviously watch this space for a new Codex inbound soon. Overall, if you want to pledge full fealty to the Blood God, and just carve up your enemies in a tide of howling mad berserkers, the Brutal World Eaters might be for you, though you probably want to wait until their actual Codex and model range are released. Moving on, we have the 4th Legion of the Iron Warriors, grim and calculating siege experts under the leadership of Perturabo, and for them, war is all about heavy weapons, massive numbers and calculation, and tend to make good use of mechanical augmentations, demon engines, and artillery bombardment when they make war. They stand as a bit of a counterpoint to several of the other legions who tend to prefer close combat, whereas these guys tend to shatter their enemies with massive bombardments and crush enemy resistance utterly beneath their armoured might. As the Legion Siege experts, they have particular hatred for the Imperial Fists, who like their last stands and fortifications and defence. They often clash with the Sons of Dawn, and particularly like to knock down their fortifications and sandcastles whenever they set them up. For unique miniatures, they don't actually have anything currently that's specific to them in 40k, though they do have plenty of heresy era things. Though to be honest, I think quite a lot of the core chaos range does do quite a good job of reflecting the Iron Warriors. The recent Warpsmith looks pretty perfect for them, and various demon engines I think fit a lot better with Iron Warriors compared with a fair few of the other legions. I think they also particularly work well with a fair few of the kits aimed at Horus Heresy, things like the older patterns of Rhinos, Predators, and perhaps Cataphracta Terminators. I think the more old technology and mass-produced type look really favours the Iron Warriors, perhaps a bit more so than some legions who like to have a lot more spikes and demonic bits going on. In game, certainly out of the core Chaos Codex, they're perhaps the most shooting and armour focused of the legions. Their guns ignore enemy cover at base, and they are a bit harder to take out than some, as they turn off enemy re-rolls to wound. On the field, their warlord traits are quite nice for buffing their own units, and they've got a brutal minus one damage stratagem as well, which can be pretty handy for terminators. If you want to have an unmovable blob of terminators in a list, then iron warriors are perhaps one of the single best places that you can do so. For raw strength, I still think that the Iron Warriors are perhaps a little bit weaker than most. In general, the majority of the strength of the Chaos Space Marine Codex tends to be in the melee units, and that doesn't work out quite as well for them. They're far from unusable though, and they have plenty of their decent own synergies, so if you want a clanking army of demon engines, obliterators, and some very hard to shift terminators, then the Iron Warriors might be for you. Moving on, we have the Zealous Wordbearers, the 17th Legion, but the first to fall to Chaos. Their Primarch Lorgar was formally chastised for worshipping the Emperor as a god, and when he was forbidden from doing this, his faith turned into bitterness, and he sought out newer and more powerful deities that were worthy of his praise. In the 41st millennium, the Wordbearers are perhaps foremost as to spreading the faith of the ruinous powers, worshipping them each equally, and dispatching their Dark Apostles to convert entire worlds to the Thrall of the Dark Gods. Compared with other legions, they have a vast amount of possessed space marines and demon kin amongst them. Unholy packs and rituals with the dark gods are very much their thing. And these zealous abomination fusions of marine and demon can be absolutely terrifying to fight on the battlefield. For miniatures in 40k, they don't have any unique ones currently. But again, like the Iron Warriors, there's plenty within the range that really fits the bill for them. In particular, the nice new possessed miniatures and the accursed cultists feel very word bearers to me. They very much lean into the demon kin angle of them 
plus the Dark Apostle makes a great HQ for them, both in terms of looks, the lore, and the game. You could also think about 30k bits like this Praetor here, or the Gal Vorbach, for a different sort of flavour of Possessed Marine. Currently in 40k, they're perhaps one of the strongest Kale Space Marine armies. The Legion benefit gives them reroll hits in combat, pretty great for all the good melee in the Codex, plus some mortal wound protection from their faith, which again is very, very nice. They've got a few really cool synergies for making Demonkin units that bit more scarier, and get souped up Dark Apostles that can cast two prayers per turn, which is a massive increase in their efficiency. Overall, it adds up to them being very powerful just in raw strength, and a real challenge to fight in combat. If you want some zealous evangelists of the Dark Gods, and brutal melee might, and the word bearers are perhaps going to be for you. Next up we have the Thousand Sons, the 15th Legion under Primarch Magnus the Red. The Thousand Sons are a psychically adept legion that caught the eye of the master manipulator Zinch during the Horus Heresy, blessing the legion with ever more degenerative mutations, such as his desire for things to always be changing. To put a stop to this, the sorcerer Araman enacted a great ritual, turning the vast majority of the legion to dust, the armour of the space marines now being little more than a hollow suit that is sorcerously compelled to do the bidding of its masters, and frighteningly hard to kill in battle, given that there's no flesh or blood components to damage. The only remaining living and breathing thousand sons are the sorcerers, who scheme in great cults to acquire forbidden lore and enact great rituals, they make war with inferno bolts, warp fire, and great magics, and are particularly hated foes of the space wolves who burnt down their homeworld during the Horus Heresy. Miniatures wise, they have a standalone codex and their own full range, perhaps a little bit smaller than the Death Guard, but still plenty of cool units. Their troops are Rubric Marines, and they can be backed up by Scarab Occult Terminators, and lots of quite cool sorcerers, and Magnus himself. A very cool looking army, in my opinion, a definite Egyptian theme going on with the Marines. In game, the Thousand Sons usually revolve around slow but tough Rubric Marines and Terminators slogging into position across the board, firing a whole bunch of warp bolts at their foe, and then usually a whole bunch of sorcerers behind the lines enacting great magics, firing out mortal wounds with witch fires, teleporting squads around the board, or making them stronger, tougher, or more dangerous when shooting. They are a bit of a thinking army to be honest though, there's a lot of things that you can be doing with them, with all their cabalistic rituals and things, so it can be a bit complex. For their in-game power at the moment, I'd say that they're fairly medium. They can certainly compete with the top armies, but they do have their challenges and drawbacks, and you have to manage the psychic phase quite well. In any case though, if you want to compel a bunch of dusty automata towards your foes, while your sorcerers concoct some devilish schemes to lay low the enemy behind them, then the Thousand Sons might be for you. Moving on, we come to the Mysterious Alpha Legion. The 20th Legion specialises in guerrilla warfare, uprisings, saboteurs, and special operations, and is perhaps the Legion of Space Marines least known about in all of 40k that's still active. It's believed that they had twin Primarchs, Alpharius and Omegon, both thought to be slain during the Heresy, though it does seem fashionable amongst Alpha Legion commanders to take up their mantle, and then likely on the battlefield to have multiple decoys in place. The Alpha Legion are a secretive legion with unclear agenda, expert at covert operations and fermenting uprising on Imperial worlds, as their chapter symbol will denote a many-headed hydra that can rear its head at any second. Their agents are mistrusted by all, including the other Chaos Space Marine legions, and often their wars and conflicts will be in service of a much greater purpose far ahead in the future. Again, for unique miniatures, they don't really have much for 40k, though again some fun stuff for heresy, including this Terminator Praetor that you can see here. In battle, their gameplay is all about duplicity and outmaneuvering the foe, they can redeploy units, move things pre-game, shield things from enemy fire at the right moment, and also force enemy vehicles to explode as well, if you happen to take one down in the midst of their ranks. Again, as they go, they have perhaps a little bit more emphasis on ranged combats than melee, though they do both okay. They do tend to be a bit safer from enemy shooting armies, having a minus one to hit at range. Overall, despite their tricks, I think they still do amount to being one of the weaker legions for Chaos Space Marines at the moment, not played anywhere near as often at tournaments as some of the others. Perhaps their tricks on the whole just aren't quite as useful as the massive increases of direct damage like, say, Word Bearers, Black Legion, or Emperor's Children can have. Still, though, a very cool army with interesting lore. If you want to take up one of the many heads of the Hydra and leave your opponents guessing at every turn, maybe the Alpha Legion is for you. Moving on, we've got the diseased denizens of the Death Guard, the 14th Legion under their Primarch Mortarion, and while becalmed in the warp, they became infected by great warp plagues of Nurgle, forced to take up the patronage of the god of death and disease, their bodies heavily mutated and rotting away, but also in a state of semi-immortal on death, and are monstrously hard to take down on the battlefield. When they make war, it tends to be in a grinding battle of attrition, wearing the enemy down against their immense durability. 
and with their patronage of Nurgle, they make war with all sorts of unholy concoctions of plague weapons. Diseases sweep through the enemy ranks and might kill as many as the Space Marines themselves, and even a glancing injury could lead to a slow and painful death over the next few days. In Warhammer 40k, the Death Guard out of any of the Chaos Legions have by far the most unique miniature sculpts, quite cool plague marines that come in Nurgle's holy number of seven, two flavours of Terminators, the Durable Blight Lords and the Scythe-wielding Death Shroud, three different demon engines, their unique zombie pox walkers, a whole slew of characters and of course Mortarian himself. Quite a nicely realised range in my opinion, though a fair few of their models do tend to be a little bit on the busy side and some people like that aesthetic a bit more than others. In game, true to their lore, they do tend to be monstrously durable, disgusting resilience gives them minus one damage across the entire army and can be very punishing to certain enemy elites with damage to weapons. For the most part, their damage output doesn't tend to be super spectacular, particularly not at long range, though things like Plague Marines and their Terminators can certainly deal a lot of damage when they get to combat, particularly with their Contagions of Nurgle making enemy lower toughness. Usually I think you'll want a core of Plague Marines and Terminators, maybe supported by a few Demon Engines, or perhaps even Mortarian himself. Overall, I'd say that the Death Guard are fairly strong overall. Certainly a solid mid-tier faction in 40k that can win tournaments on occasion. Games Workshop did reverse a fair few of the nerfs that they'd suffered in Warzone Nephilim. Overall though, if you want to lead a grim and durable assault of some semi-dead space marines with plague weapons, then the Death Guard might be the Legion of Choice to spread Nurgle's blessings far and wide. Moving on, we come to the 8th Legion of the Night Lords, perhaps one of the more twisted and uncontrolled legions, their Primarch Conrad Curse tended to rule with terror, shaping the Legion very much in his image, a savage murderer, keeping enemy populations in line with sheer terror, the Legion often enjoying stealth tactics, praying from the shadows, and making gruesome examples of enemy troops, flaying them alive and taking trophies. They often make war to prey on Imperial populations and take what they want on these, and in battle they often attack in lightning-wreathed armour, often using jump packs with Havocs or Warp Talons to descend on screaming jump packs. Again, for unique models, there's nothing really for 40k currently. There are plenty of Horus Heresy options, including these fun Terminators with the disturbing chain blades. You might need to adapt the Volkite, though, if you wanted to use them in 40k. A lot of the Night Lord's playstyle keys off enemy leadership debuffs, reducing their leadership and combat attrition so they're more likely to flee, and also getting a damage buff against anything that they get to quite low leadership. It means they work quite well with Demonkin units that have an extra minus one, so they can even be hitting quite high leadership troops on a plus one to wound. And a few of their stratagems are also really quite useful in the book as well. They've got a nasty one to prevent fallback, a minus one to hit at range, and Vox Scream to turn off enemy auras. Power-wise, I would rank them probably medium to lower. The leadership debuff mechanic is just a bit unreliable, as it applies far more to some armies, and other armies won't care but a few of their support options are fairly decent, and they have seen at least a little bit of tournament success since the book dropped. In any case, if you want to strike fear into the heart of your foes, and jump from the shadows in stylish midnight-clad armour, then maybe the Night Lords might be the Legion for you. Moving on, we get beyond the core legions, but there's plenty of other interesting renegade warbands for the Chaos Space Marines in 40k. Some have in-game rules and some don't, but one of the ones that does is the creations of Bile, the warband of Fabius Bile himself, the renegade apothecary of the Emperor's children, who went rogue and now has his own personal mission to create an army of super soldier space marines, the likes of which has never been seen before. During this quest, and through his talent and manipulation, he's amassed himself a fairly sizable following, warbands augmented by his meddling, having greatly augmented strength, toughness, and other more exotic enhancements. Mr. Bile is also known as the Spider, for obvious reasons given his model, but also for knowing to be manipulative and perhaps not to be trusted, and it leads him into not infrequent conflict with other Chaos Space Marine warbands when their goals don't align. In-game, his creations do have rules within the core Chaos Codex, slightly less support than most of the other legions, but are still a very, very powerful force to behold. Every model gets extra strength, movements, and the ability to fight on death when they're in combat, really quite a potent cocktail, and particularly the last bit, it does mean that if the opponents try to counter-attack you with melee units, you'll often get to take down a fair few of them when they kill you, which is pretty brutal. Really nasty with units like Possessed and Terminators, sometimes the opponent might need to kill them in combat, and if they do, then you get a bunch of free attacks. They also have a very nice advance and charge stratagem as well, which can be really handy on things like Terminators, though weirdly enough, out of all of the models in the army, Bile himself is perhaps one of the weakest, perhaps mainly because his augmentation abilities just don't tend to be quite as useful as giving a Chaos unit a mark, which gives you a predictable buff. Perhaps a slight mess up on the rules there on Games Workshop's point of view. Overall though, they do seem to be really quite a strong faction, a fairly niche faction in terms of the lore and their following, 
but does seem to be gaining quite a lot of favour at tournaments and things these days, just because of how interesting that fights on death mechanic is. They've seen quite a bit of success, and are perhaps one of the strongest Chaos Legions at the moment. In any case though, if you want Mr. Bile leading a collection of hulking augmented monstrosities at the enemy, then perhaps the forces of the Clone Lord might be one for you to look into. Next up we have the Dark Angels. You couldn't really have a Chaos Legion video without talking about them. The rumours and slander aside, probably the main ones to focus on from a Chaos Space Marine perspective are the Fallen, the Dark Angels of Caliban that went rogue during the Horus Heresy, following Lionel Johnson's second-in-command Luther, and turning their back on the Emperor's light. During the Loyalist assault on their own homeworld of Caliban, the Chaos Gods decided to scatter much of the Fallen throughout time and space, with individual heretics, entire squadrons and armies of the Fallen being scattered throughout time, and suddenly emerging into real space, blurting out heretical secrets that the Dark Angels strive to keep under wraps. The Dark Angels originally imprisoned Luther in their fortress monastery of the Rock, but he has since escaped, and is rumoured to be leading an army of the Fallen out there somewhere in the galaxy, biding his time until he amasses the strength to strike. Over the years, the Fallen have been a mini-army that have kind of waxed and waned in Games Workshop's support. Currently, they don't really have all that much rule support in 40k, aside from their one unique miniature, Cypher, the Fallen Angel with the dual pistols, and the mysterious sword slung across his back. Realistically, if I were fielding a Fallen force in 40k at the moment, I would probably just take the rules of one of the other legions, Maybe Black Legion or Alpha Legion might be what some of the ones to fit the bills rules-wise best, include Cypher, and then mainly have the Fallen as a bit more of a modelling distinction, as opposed to an in-game rules thing. Cypher himself does have rules, he does have some annoying utility, and can get in the opponent's way a bit, it's kind of hard to kill, but with just the pistols his damage output is kind of merely okay, you don't really see him run in competitive lists. A bit of a weird one rules-wise, I guess it's not impossible that they might get some sort of realisation in a Fallen kill team at some stage, I can't really see Games Workshop unleashing an entire army of them though. Their following is kind of niche, and I can't help but think that the Emperor's children would get a proper release far beyond these would. I think a kill team of Fallen though could be really cool to realise them as a mini faction in 40k. Another very prominent Renegade Warband are the Red Corsairs, formerly the Astral Claws chapter. Though their leader Luft Huron led them against the Imperium, due to the rampant corruption of the Imperial nobility, constantly thwarting their efforts to maintain order over their sector. Though his initial intentions were well-meaning, taking a stand against the corruption within the Imperium, during the Badab War with the conflict against the rest of the Imperium bringing its might to bear on the Successionists, the chapter then fell to chaos and became a renegade pirate fleet operating out of the Maelstrom. The name of Huron Blackheart is now a scourge to countless worlds, and in the Indomitus era their fleet has now been bolstered by a fancy new flagship, a gift from Abaddon the Despoiler. Currently for 40k, they don't actually have any miniatures on sale from Games Workshop, Huron Blackheart is a playable character, but the sculpt is rather old and it's been subject to their range rotation, so it's currently not on their web store, and you'd only be able to get it from second hand. There is some rumours that it might be re-sculpted at some point, there was a demonic power claw with a flamer in it that does look like it could be a new model for him. Like the creations of Bile, they get a similar Renegade chapter type support package in Codex Chaos Space Marines, though maybe have slightly less standout rules. Huron's kind of okay, some of the Warlord traits and relics are usable but not standout, really the entire reason to play them is their big advance and charge mechanic, allowing the Chaos units to get into melee rather quickly. This really is a massive advantage to have army wide though, and it is a solid draw to play in the faction. It makes them particularly good with bikes, who do also have another stratagem that makes them even more scary, a big unit of corn bikes could work well here. Overall, despite this, I would still rank them as weaker. Their Renegade Legion style trait is pretty decent, but they just don't have all the support options that the rest have. Still though, if you want some piratical raiding Chaos Marines, and an army that moves very quickly across the battlefield into combat, then the Red Corsairs might be for you. Otherwise, lore-wise, there's plenty of other Renegades out there, and here are just a few of the more notable warbands. The Purge follow Nurgle, see all life as corrupt, and make war to eradicate all of it entirely. The Brazen Beasts have unknown origin, make war with mighty waves of cornate demon engines to crush the enemy into pulp. The Crimson Slaughter were kind of the poster child of the 6th edition launch box set, they were formerly the Crimson Sabres, driven mad by corn while fighting cultists, and now murder their way across the galaxy very happily. The Scourged were blessed by Zinch to hear the falsehoods of the Imperium, and turned renegade as they couldn't stand the hypocrisy of their own masters, perhaps a little knowledge can be a bit of a dangerous thing I suppose and the Flawless Host fell to Slaanesh, formerly they were the Pride Force Shining Blades chapter, their arrogance led to disaster and excommunication against the Imperium. In previous books, these renegade chapters and warbands did have some rules, currently following the new Chaos books, they are all bereft of them. 
So if you wanted to field them, again, it might just make sense to take the rules for the Legion that resembles them the most. Maybe the World Eaters for the Brazen Beasts, perhaps, or the Emperor's Children for the Flawless Host. Still doesn't mean that you can't run them, and it does seem at least plausible that Games Workshop might reintroduce some rules for them in a future supplement. It seemed like they could be a reasonable choice for one of those Warzone expansion books. Besides this, there's plenty of other heretical warbands out there, and you could even field Chaos Marines as a shadowy mix of Demonic and Chaos Allies under Bellacor. The rules for that can be found in the Chaos Demons Codex, and it can be quite a fun way to mix a fun and dark Demonic Force. In any case though, I think we'll leave that there for today. Let me know which Chaos Legion draws you to them the most, and why that particular flavour of heresy is the one that's right for you. As always, I look forward to hearing all your thoughts down in the comments section. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I do have some specific Legion breakdowns of a fair few of the major ones, and we'll try and get through every single one of them in their own video in time. Subscribe to the channel, or search out the other Chaos videos if you'd like to see more. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, then I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that down in the video description below. The channel's Patreon page is how I can afford to keep on making these videos quite so regularly, so if you are enjoying a lot, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.